they're here. Finally, the new RTX graphics cards are here. Happy RTX day, everyone. And I'm gonna do a bit of an unboxing. This is definitely not the right way of opening this box, but I'm going for it. Oh, well, it's more than one. Oh God, what a mess. Possibly the worst unboxing I've ever done in terms of uh, smoothness. This is so cool. RTX 2080, which will set you back, this is the founder's edition, this will set you back 750 pounds. The most powerful gaming graphics card in the world, the RTX 2080 Ti. This will set you back, again, the founder's edition, 1,100 pounds. That is a lot of, um, a lot of horsepower, a lot of gaming grunt right here, and I cannot wait to properly test and benchmark these for you guys. Now, unfortunately, because of embargoes and NDAs, I can't actually put these in my system and give you results today and show you benchmarks and all that, but I will as soon as I'm allowed to. Full review videos coming out very soon. So as I say, these are the Founders Edition cards, which are £100 or $100 more than the regular uh, cards, but they are slightly overclocked. They have uh, a dual fan set up, and just a little bit uh, better essentially than the regular cards. I've been looking at these behind glass doors and on stages for weeks, but this is the first time I've actually been able to hold one. And video have kept a lot of this stuff very close to their chest, which I think is something that a lot of people, including myself, have been a bit frustrated about. They've been so keen to talk about their new technology, which I'll get onto, ray tracing and tensor cores and deep learning AI, all that stuff. But I don't think they've really got the message out just yet, at least, of what kind of an upgrade this really is compared to current cards and what kind of frame rate difference you'll see in the games we play every day. Oh, that is a beautiful card. What's that? Well, that doesn't look good for an unboxing video. Boom. So this is the RTX 2080, which is probably the card most people are gonna buy because it seems to be like a good, literally a halfway house between the 2070 and the 2080 Ti, which is ridiculously expensive, but also I expect ridiculously powerful, but we'll get onto that. But before I give you a tour and talk about what's new, let me put it back here just for a moment and open up this guy. Da, 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 da. There it is. The 2080 Ti. Boom, that's uh, got so many boxes going on. These are both beautiful cards. Although actually I've just noticed there's a little plastic cover here on this one on the Ti, but not on the 80, so. Great. The first thing you'll notice about these Founders Edition cards is the dual fan setup with a cooling chamber beneath. Previous Founders cards just had the one fan, now we've got two, and Nvidia are promising we'll get much, much lower temperatures, and also uh, they'll be far quieter in your system. The 2080 needs an 8 plus 6 pin connector, whereas the TI requires two 8 pin connectors. Where am I looking? Yes, right there. <laughs> two 8 pin connectors, so a little bit uh, more power hungry the TI, as you would expect. We get three DisplayPort 1.4s, one HDMI 2.0B, no HDMI 2.1, as well as a new USB-C port. This is for something called Virtual Link, which has been designed with future VR headsets in mind. This can deliver power and also data, so we should be able to connect this straight to VR headsets non-currently exist, and therefore significantly reduce the hassle of cables and how many wires you have to deal with. So that's quite cool. We've got the usual PCIe connection here, but something you may miss on first glance is what's behind this little uh, bit of plastic here. And this is the new NV link, which essentially is the new type of SLI. It only works on the 2080 and the 2080 Ti. This 2070 will not support this, but it has much, much higher bandwidth than current SLI bridges, which means if you put two 2080s or two 2080 Ti's together, you're gonna get ridiculous performance. Now, not necessarily like a 100% increase in your frame rate, but what NVIDIA say it will help with mostly is higher resolution monitors, so perhaps you're using an 8K panel, and also higher refresh, so 8K60 or 4K120, 4K144, those sort of things. That's where this NVLink connection pairing two graphics cards, the brand new kind of SLI is really gonna come in handy. So if you're watching this, you've probably already seen a whole bunch of videos and read a whole bunch of articles on these new cards. What's new, are they any good? 
the hype around it. And there has been a lot of hype around them. But the headline here is this is a whole new architecture. It's based on the Turing architecture. Last time it was Pascal, now we're on Turing, which is on a smaller manufacturing process. So with the new architecture, in these cards, we have CUDA cores, then we have RT cores. These are new. And this is for the ray tracing. We've probably heard a lot about it when Battlefield, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Metro, the new fancy reflections and shadows and lighting effects you get. That's ray tracing. Now ray tracing, as I'm sure you know, isn't new. Uh, Hollywood have been doing it for 20, 30 years, but this is the first time that with these new RT cores, which is measured in giga rays, that they're fast enough for real-time ray tracing. I suppose technically the older cards could have done it if the drivers had supported it, but these are 10 times faster in terms of giga ray performance uh, for ray tracing. So maybe they could have before, but it would have just destroyed your frame rate. It is worth noting though that right now, if I plug this into my PC, I can't actually play any ray tracing games. I need to wait for Microsoft's DXR update, that's a DirectX update, in order to support it, which is something that's actually gonna come a few weeks after launch in October. So that's CUDA cores, RT cores, and finally we have the new Tensor cores. This is for AI and deep learning. This is super futuristic stuff. And what it allows is something called DLSS. It allows for lots of other things, but DLSS I think is the most exciting new feature, which is a new type of anti-aliasing. And NVIDIA actually say that a 2080 Ti versus a 1080 Ti, when you're playing the same game, same settings, one with DLSS enabled, the other with a regular TAA anti-aliasing, we're actually looking at 100% performance increase, twice the performance using the new AA on this, which is astounding. Trying to explain what deep learning and AI and neural networks are is probably a little bit beyond an unboxing video, but essentially what happens is a developer, let's say DICE for Battlefield 5, they give their unfinished game to NVIDIA. They give them a really, really uh, aliased version, a low quality, jaggy, horrible version, and a beautiful original truth version is what they call it. They then put that in NVIDIA's supercomputer and it tries through pattern recognition and corrections and deep learning essentially tries to match it. After running this on their supercomputers, you will then be able to download a GeForce driver update, which will essentially download the AA packets, the sort of the information you need to get that DLSS in that game on your new graphics card, which is why there's a very, very minimal performance hit, but you're still getting very, very high quality anti-aliasing. This is really complicated stuff, and I hope you're still with me, and DLSS is just one of the benefits of the tensor cores and the AI and deep learning. One thing I should mention though, is when you see the uh, tech demos and the NVIDIA presentations showing RTX on and off, and you see the list of games that are RTX enabled, that doesn't necessarily mean they all support the super fancy ray tracing feature. RTX enabled means either it supports the DLSS anti-aliasing or the ray tracing, or maybe both. But most games like Battlefield 5 have ray tracing, but then you see PUBG, that is just DLSS anti-aliasing, which means you won't get those fancy reflections and shadows, but you will get much better anti-aliasing. And again, we need all the performance help we can get in PUBG. CUDA cores, RT cores, Tensor cores, and also we've got new GDDR6 memory in here, which is much more efficient, much higher bandwidth. So with all that new technology, I think these new chewing cards are very, very exciting. That was probably the most technical and heavy and longest unboxing video I've ever done, but if you've stuck with me, I appreciate it, thank you very much. So I'll be reviewing the 2080 and the 2080 Ti. The 2070 is not coming out for another few weeks, so I might get that a little bit later on. But in my full review, in a few days, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. I'll be testing the performance, how these compare, which one you should go for, how these compare to the last generation of cards, what kind of difference, if I can get it enabled, ray tracing makes to a performance, is it a big impact? And if you've got any other questions you'd like me to answer, do put them in the comments below and I'll factor them into my full review. And if you did enjoy this video, do click that like and subscribe button below there somewhere. And I cannot wait to show you what these monsters can do in my system. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.